chair now recognizes Mr. Armstrong from North Dakota. Well, if I could plead guilty to two years of tax evasion when I was accused of six, I might consider that to be a pretty good plea deal. And let's talk about what this is and what it's supposed to be. Mr. Shapley, I think you were going to testify that IRS criminal tax attorneys are advisory only, and often DOJ prosecutors uh, disagree with the IRS tax attorneys. Is that probably an accurate statement? Yes, it's an accurate statement. And I think this is important because everybody continues to go after you two, like you're the only two people who were involved in this. You, were, you went to work for the IRS in 2008? Uh, 2009, correct. 2009. Uh, Mr. Ziegler, 2010? 20, 2010. So you started under President Obama, continued your career under President Trump, and are continuing your career under President Biden. Is that accurate? Yes, that is accurate. Correct. And in your entire career, excluding today, how many times have you talked about who appointed a U.S. attorney? I haven't. In the course of any investigation, have you talked about whether it was a Democratic appointee or a Republican appointee? I have not, no. Mr. Ziegler? I have not. Because it's not supposed to matter, right? And that's why you have line U.S. attorneys that also go across administrations and work through Republican administrations, Democratic administrations, and that's the part of your investigative team. Now, that investigative team uh, recommended that you charge Hunter Biden for every tax year from 2014 till 2019 and felonies for at least 2014 and 2018. And this included income from Burisma and a scheme to evade taxes through a partnership with a convicted felon. Is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate. And the total amount of taxes not paid over that period or not paid timely was over $1.5 million, and that didn't include interest and penalties or other enhancements that are typically involved in this case, correct? Yes, that's correct. And your, Mr. Ziegler, your testify identifies two separate criminal violations, which is an attempt to avoid taxes and filing false tax returns, and they both carry a six-year statute of limitations. That is correct. And Mr. Shapley, you stated that the purposeful exclusion of the 2014 and 2015 tax years sanitized the most substantial criminal conduct and concealed material facts. Can you expound on that a little bit? So, so yeah, uh, that, that statement in, uh, made to the House Ways and Means Committee was in reference to uh, uh, the, the uh, income from Burisma that was not reported, and uh, therefore, if it wasn't reported, it wouldn't be on a statement of facts, and uh, it would be completely left off the, the, the official record. And as far as you're aware, that's not part of any plea deal, correct? I can't speak to the plea deal, but yeah, I don't believe so. I want to talk about something that is a little unique to this investigation. I want to take you back to December 7th and 8th of 2020. And you were planning a, your investigative team, right? This is the whole team, East Coast, all across the country. Numerous interviews being, are going to be conducted. And Hunter Biden was going to be the subject of one of those in L.A., correct? That's correct. And this is unique because who, uh, Joe Biden has won the election. We're walking into this. And there are some serious, I mean, if there's Secret Service protectees, I'm assuming you have to contact the Secret Service. You're not walking up with armed FBI agents to a Secret Service protectee. Yes, we, we had a plan on how to approach Hunter Biden that day. Could you briefly explain that plan? So uh, the FBI, SSA, and I were assigned with uh, interviewing Hunter Biden that day. And the day previous, we went to the L.A. FBI field office and asked them to, uh, to the, the special agent in charge to contact the Secret Service special agent in charge from the L.A. field office at 8 a.m. on uh, the morning of December 8th and tell them that two uh, agents were, were going to approach Hunter Biden to, uh, to, in, um, as part of an official investigation. And uh, the night before, all of that changed. And all of that changed because FBI headquarters and Secret Service headquarters coordinated, and that, uh, and that information had gotten out to uh, everybody the night before. And we can talk about whether it's a highly political investigation and all of those different things, but there's another group of people that was uh, made aware of that the night before, wasn't there? Yeah, that's correct. And that would be the transition team. That's correct. And the transition team is a political operation set up to help the president-elect vet cabinet employees, work on inauguration, do all of those things. I mean, is that your understanding? Uh, generally, yes. Do they have any special investigative powers I don't know about? 
Not that I would know of. In your entire history and uh, working in history with the IRS, you ever worked with a transition team of a resident to uh, help set up an interview with a subject of a criminal investigation? I have not. Uh, last question. Did you ever get to interview Hunter Biden? We did not interview him. Thank you. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Chair now.